for those listeners who are new to your work, maybe you could tell us a little bit about how you got into this world of science in the first place and how your science and research background maybe brought a little bit of folding that into a healthcare system today. Yeah, yeah, there's the, the short version of what brought me to where I am now it was having already committed to the life of an academic and wanting to become a professor and a scientist, that that journey actually started with me studying, uh, well, focusing just on muscle adaptations to exercise. But I very fortuitously stumbled on a paper that had been published in the late 90s. And at the time, this was early 2000s, that documented the degree to which the fat cells actively secrete pro-inflammatory cytokines. And that was a mechanism in this early study that detailed how fat cells contribute to insulin resistance, this foundational problem at the time, just I thought to type two diabetes, mm. but that was the beginning. That was the moment where the path I'd been on immediately deviated. And rather than studying muscle adaptations to exercise, I wanted to learn more about the consequences of fat cells getting too big and that also leading to what makes those fat cells get big. And my hope being a scientist who understands those topics pretty well is that we are able to translate the best science into practice. But that's where that's where I think modern day scientists need to be a little humble. I have, of course, a lot I could say on the matter of academia and how disappointed I am with higher education and the direction it's gone. But I also have some disappointment for modern medicine, of course, so I don't, I'm not sparing my, my, my criticism just for my own guys in the lab. To me, medicine is best practiced when you have a group of biomedical scientists whose career is devoted to finding answers to relevant questions. And then those answers are shared with the clinicians who then put them, who give them those ideas life. Because the clinician is the one who's on the front line the scientist is not. The scientist is back in the lab or in the research clinic. And so to me, the optimal practice of, of medicine is one that is supported on the best science. And that, of course, involves the biomedical scientist. Well, it's interesting. I've been perusing your websites, InsulinIQ and BenBickman.com. And it's obvious you've taken your research and scientific background and your inquisitive nature to why we're all getting sick, but you sort of folded it into helping inspire many other people to become proactive in their own health care. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about that part of what you're doing, and then we'll dig deep a little bit into insulin resistance, a little bit of the basic science. Yeah. I think this is really important to at least speak about it at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually appreciate you you bringing that up. It was an interesting experience for me after I earned tenure. So everyone, of course, understands that when you get hired as a professor at a university, you're not done. Your job isn't done. You have about six years to prove to the university that you are worth keeping around. And that's tenure and or, or whatever university's version of it. And, and after I received tenure, knowing that my job was fairly secure, I actually, I had a, a very honest moment of, of self-reflection where I wondered at the relevance of everything I was doing, where I, I thought I had a valuable knowledge set, which is an understanding of what makes fat cells grow and shrink and why is that a problem when they're too big. I thought that was valuable information, and yet I was, I couldn't deny the fact that as I continued to publish peer-reviewed papers, no one would ever read them and no one would ever benefit from them. So I was humbled by the irrelevance of academia. It's almost like we're <laughs> printing, we're printing monopoly money. It, it has no value in the real world. It's a currency with only value in, in the, in the tower in the ivory tower of academia. And that then led me to ask myself, what can I do? And that was the beginning. This was about 10 years ago, almost not quite where I, started putting the outline together uh, of th thoughts on a book and then thinking to myself, I, I want to have a way to share this book. And that was my foray into uh, social media and ultimately the, the creation of insulin IQ and Ben just efforts to try to share what I consider to be the best knowledge 
on topics of human metabolism. And, and we'll dig deeper into that. But I guess the question is, and, and maybe this is part of your book, why do we get sick? And maybe you can just give us an overview of that and how important it is that we all work to understand some of the basic science of what's going on in this world. Yeah, yeah, I really appreciate that question. My, my attempt in the book, Why We Get Sick, was to try to present an idea that much of chronic disease is not individual origins, where, where you look at cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, and all the other big ones that scare us. It's tempting to think that they each have very distinct origins, and, and thus it's impossible for a person to try to address all of them. It would just be too much, overwhelming. In Why We Get Sick, I present the idea, mind you, of course, supported with significant evidence, otherwise I never would have come to that conclusion, that despite whatever modest differences all of these diseases may have in their origins, they all share one single common origin. And that is, in fact, a metabolic origin derivative of a problem in the master of all metabolic hormones, namely the humble hormone insulin. Mm. Most people think of insulin as having, no, in fact, many people think of insulin as just as a drug for people with diabetes. But of course, the truth is it's a hormone. And even then, most people think it has only relevance insofar as it helps control blood glucose. The reality is insulin dictates metabolism at every single cell of the body. And by influencing metabolism at every cell of the body, it actually influences all of these problems. Not only the ones I mentioned, but also things like infertility and fatty liver disease and many more. So the idea and why we get sick is presenting uh, a kind of a common soil hypothesis that despite their differences, most chronic diseases can in fact be, if you dig down deep enough, you'll get to this foundational cause of insulin resistance. And then the good news is when you recognize the relevance of insulin resistance in chronic disease, it gives you one single target.